السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. This is very important. The session for today is very, very important. I think we can relax on the board. We cannot be. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Salat wa salam ala Rasulillah. All praise be to Allah. May peace and blessings of Allah be upon all prophets from Adam. Nuh alayhi salam Ibrahim, Musa alayhi salam coming down to Isa until the last messenger who was sent as a mercy to the world, Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah. May Allah be pleased with Sahaba companions of the Prophet who accompanied him and assisted him to convey this message of Islam. Allah be pleased with them. Admit them in general and raise them in status. And then may Allah guide us, all of us. We are lost in many ways, and without the guidance of Allah, we are not. We need that guidance. And we are making a lot of mistakes in life. And without the forgiveness from Allah, we are doomed. We are weak. And without the strength from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we remain to be weak. And that is why in Surah Al-Fatiha, when we pray, when we perform salah, in this Surah Al-Fatiha, there is a verse and ayah that goes as follows, Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Oh Allah, you alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. We are helpless without the help of Allah. He is the all perfect, the almighty, right? The all merciful, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So having said that, I wanna go straight to the title of our discussion today, or our meeting. What does it read, Ya Shabbat? The challenges you face in America. The challenges that youth face in America. Right? And uh, some of the solutions. Some of the solutions to those challenges. Okay. I want to begin as follows. In Quran, which is the last revelation, the last hope for humanity, Quran. Allah Azza wa Jalla, Allah the Almighty, tells us that he created us. So a Muslim does not doubt the fact that Allah is the creator. Allah khaliqu kulli shay. Allah is the creator of everything. Wa huwa ala kulli shay in wakil. And he is the protector of everything. But having created us, he also informed us that part of our life is going to be good then part of our life will be full of ups and downs, some hardships. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala summarized our life as وَنَبْلُوكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ fitna. That He will try us. Allah is going to try you and me with what? Good moments will be a trial for you and also difficult moments will also be a trial for you. The complete understanding of trials, al ibtila wal imtihan in Islam. Some people have misunderstood, some people have misconstrued the concept of trials. When they don't have job, when they are going through some financial hardships, when they are sick, right? when maybe they feel isolated in the community, no one is closer to them, people are against them, then you say, oh man, I'm going through, you know, a lot of hardships and a lot of trials. Yes, it is a hardship, but you know what? Allah is also trying you at your, whatever you consider to be your best moments. When you have a job, you are tried with your earning. How are you spending it? Do you have the poor or not? 
when you are healthy and you are not sick, how do you use your health to benefit yourself, benefit your environment, and benefit others? Or you are using your health to abuse, persecute, and punish others. Anything you think, okay, that is your life, is also, there is a trial in it. So I just want to start with this. That there are challenges at the time of ease, but also there are challenges at the time of, of hardships and difficulties. This is the reality. And so at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that he will, he's going to he's gonna try us. Right? Each one of us will be tried. And each one of us has his or, or her own challenges. You have your challenges. Some are individual. Others are within the family. Okay? Those trials. And then other trials are communal. Other trials are, it covers the, the whole nation. And then other trials are global. There is no way except that each one of us will go through some challenges, some confrontations, time of hardships, and even at the time of ease, there are still challenges. Having understood this, the Prophet said in a hadith, and today I want to be very professionally, I want to be professional like a lecturer. Okay? Not just an imam. I want to promote myself to a college. PhD, not, not uh, under, undergrad. No. Inshallah. Say inshallah. Okay. The Prophet sallallahu said, Ajaban li amri al mu'min. That how amazing are the affairs of a believer. Inna amrahu kullahu khayy. For all the affairs, all affairs of a believer is khay, is good. Can you imagine? All your, there is good in all your affairs. Whatever you view as negative and anything you consider to be positive, there is still good in it. In aswabahu khayrun, mada, shakara, bakana khayran lahu. When this believer receives good, something good. When he is going through good, what should he do? He should be grateful and thankful. He should praise Allah who has granted, who has granted him that good or goodness, then it's good for him because he's grateful, right? You have to receive the blessings and favors by doing what? By being grateful, thankful, and by praising Allah. Because Allah says, Wama min Allah. Every favor and blessing you have, when you say, Oh, I'm 20 something years old, that is a blessing, man. Some people die before. The fact that you saw the following day, right? This is, sun has set. And this is night. Okay? And then morning is going to come. And the brightness of daytime is going to come. Isn't that a blessing in favor of Allah that you are still seeing another day and another day? You are healthy. The fact that you maintain your job, you are eating, you have a lot of clothes that sometimes you don't even know what you have of clothing. Six months you buy a cloth, you put it on once or twice, out of excitement, then you dump it somewhere. A year later, you come and you say, oh, you are talking to your cloth. Are you still here? <laughs> when, when you are going deep into, into your, right? You say, oh, so this socks is still here. I don't even remember buying it. That is how much we've been favored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you are favored and you are going through all these blessings, shakara, you have to be grateful and thankful to Allah, fakana khayran lahu, then it's good for you. Wa in asabahu shabi. But also when afflicted with some hardships, right? Going through hardships, life is a little bit, you know, as some people say, unbearable. We exaggerate that it's unbearable. At least you have mouth to say it's unbearable. <laughs> Some people are so dry that they cannot talk. They cannot breathe, right? They're in the hospitals. They're in emergency. They can, they can hardly breathe. You understand that? So even when you're going through hardships, then it's still good for you, yani, that you do what? Sabara. You have to be patient. You have to endure with patience. Then it's good for you. So you find that when you are going through ease, 
you are grateful. And when you are going through a hardship, what is happening? You are patient. Then you find that all your affairs is going to be what? Is going to be good and they will be good in it. Having said that, brothers, I want to go straight to the point. Challenges that are facing youths in America and all over the world, especially Muslim youths. I want to list them down. My, our agreement with the, the organizer, the, the pioneer, pioneer organizer, Brother Kamal, is that I just want to do a presentation and then we're going to open the, how do you call it? A forum for discussion. I want people to talk, inshallah. We need to talk. We contribute. If you have a question that is, you know, that is bothering you, something that is affecting you, something that, you know, you cannot, for example, find a, an interpretation. I don't interpret dreams, eh? I dreamt this, you know, I was sleeping and I dreamt there was a snake with seven heads. I don't interpret those things. <laughs> I, I don't know about the dream. Right, I don't know. Like in, we have a lot of challenges in life. As, you know, we have a lot of challenges at work. We have a lot of challenges socially. We have a lot of challenges as individuals. We have a lot of challenges as we are growing and evolving as a person, right? We have a lot of challenges as a family. Please, please, if you don't speak out, never will you find a solution. Many people are going into depression, deep depression, because they don't want to share what they are going through with at least a second person. Right, my brothers? You are, you, we are social beings. We are coexisting beings. We were not created to live in isolation. You have to share, you have to talk. You don't need to talk to the whole world about some of your issues, but confine in someone. Isn't that English? To confine. Who doesn't understand that? Muslim Americans, to confine. Yeah, you have to talk to somebody, a friend who can advise you. Sometimes you, you, you don't even need an answer from somebody. You don't need a response. Sometimes you just want to be heard. And where you are, that opportunity is not given to you. Right? How are you going to find solutions if you don't? If you are sick and you say that, no, 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 I'm not going to go to the doctor. How are you going to be treated? How are you going to find treatment? Right, brothers and sisters? So one of the challenges one of the challenges and anybody who has the phone use it for this be a good be a good student or be a good listener you can record this in 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 in, in bullets now nah? one two three four i want to be a lecturer as i said no khutbah today no no no, no. i want to be point after point i forgot my my suit and the tie one of the challenges that confronts Muslim youths or even other youths in America and globally now, especially Muslims, I want to I wanna target Muslims, is commitment to maintain your faith, your Iman and doubting Islam. Write it down. commitment to maintain and sustain your iman, your faith, but also doubting al-Islam, doubting your religion. We are living in the world and environment of atheism, paganism, and there are just many, 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 you know, crazy and evil things That are, that are taking place around us. And most of them are entire faith. Most of them are entire faith. Remember we are living in the world also of Satanism now. Every country says freedom of worship, including worshiping devil. Satanists are there. So you can imagine that you have a true faith true religion and now shaitan is also using the surrounding to cast doubt in your heart that you start either doubting your religion or doubting part of it it is a challenge 
So that is point number one, write it down. I'm talking to intellectuals here. Youth are very intellectual. Academicians. I'm talking to literate, elite, not illiterate. Write it down. I'm going to ask you towards the end. Point number two, I'm just mentioning challenges, eh? Then I expect, I'm, I, I'm provoking your thoughts. And then I would expect that you base your questions on that, inshallah. Point number two, challenge number two, that youths and young people are going through is called identity, identity crisis. Am I an American? 100% am I a Muslim? Where am I? Which lifestyle do I want to call? Identity. Identity crisis is a big thing amongst youths. They want to try everything. You want to try everything. Everything you see, whether it's good or bad, you want to try. Because you're at that age, you were just a baby yesterday, right? Now you are growing and you want to you wanna fit in the society and the surrounding. So there is an issue of identity. Right? Identity crisis is a big thing. Good or bad? You want to try. And it's a big thing. Sometimes maybe somebody, a girl, want to behave like a, a boy. Sometimes a boy want to behave like a girl. Sometimes you just want to try to walk like a girl and, and, and make yourself happy. <laughs> Identity crisis. A boy just want to try to, how do you say it? To reduce his voice a little bit. He's like, Salaamu Alaikum. Then he says, Salaamu Alaikum. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? If you ask some people, Who am I? Who am I, man? Sometimes you'd see boys, they are hanging out, then they start walking like that in our community. Mm, mm, mm. And then another one also. He's putting his hand like, What is this? Identity crisis is a big challenge for Muslims and non-Muslims. It is. Right, my brothers? Point number three, which is a, another big challenge, is family. No, it's parental and family issues. It is a challenge, especially parents who were born outside America and came here. They are of two, three, four categories, these parents. Some of them came and went to school here. They have some, it is called know-how of what happens in the system. Because if you want to know the system, you are not going to know it from where you live. The system starts from school, for example. It can be elementary, high school, and some parents went to school. So they have an idea, but not fully, because they did not go through high school yet. They did not. And then there are other parents who came, and they never went to school yet. They don't know much about what you are going through at schools. They don't know. They don't get it. A lot of, a lot, especially in public schools, a lot of issues, right? How many points did I mention? Three. What is the first one? Today I'm a professor. Call me Professor Imam. Professor Imam. 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 Temporarily call me like that. Then I can be more, more, more motivated to pour my brain. How many things did I mention until now? I'm not going to move forward if, if you are not following me today. The first one? Commitment to maintain your faith and doubt, right? Doubting Islam. Number two, identity crisis. Number three, parental and family issues, right? I call it parental and family complicated issues. Right? So there is that struggle. There is a lot of struggle when it comes to parental and, uh, and uh, you know, family issues 
and you can divide it into there are some problems with parents we are living in, in, the, in, in, in an environment where or in which some parents would start teasing their kids that you're going to leave my house soon you are now 18 some of them are starting from age 14 most of kids in our American society if you ask some of them are you from here? he says no where are you from? he mentioned East Coast where did you see your parents last? he says maybe three years ago <laughs> maybe two years ago I last visited them, you know, when, when family were coming together. There is no relationship. Parents and, 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 you know, there are some issues with parents and then there are some issues with children themselves. They don't listen to their parents. They don't obey their parents, you know. They run away from homes because he doesn't want to be told, you know, do this and don't do this. He feels like I'm 18, I can survive. I can walk, can get some work at Walmart, you know make my money he thinks that he doesn't need his parents and so you know and then there is also an issue of family when it comes to decision making such as you know marriage and all this right there are a lot of family issues a lot of misunderstanding point number four we call it materialism uh being materialistic that is the world now. All these systems ending with ism, 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 it's all about material. Communism, capitalism, imperialism, Marxism, everything ism, ism, ism is, is all about material. So that is why they talk about American dream. Uh, in 70s and 80s, they were talking about one million dollar dream. If you had a million dollars, man, you could fly without wings. Today, a million is not that much. That is a simple house in Denver, Colorado. Yeah, simpler. Four bedroom, maybe the big. So, they fix your mind in chasing the world, and they believe that money and wealth is a priority, not Allah, not your creator. And you have also seen the systems of the world now. All, all those ism, ism, ism has no relationship with Allah. Has no relationship with Allah. Secularism, Islam promotes education. Go to school to the highest, earn the highest degree. A Muslim should pursue, your pursuit should be higher, higher than PhD. Right, brothers? A plus, A plus, A plus. But how do you treat education? It is an additional tool that is going to help you to have good life in this world and tomorrow hereafter. It is just an additional tool that is not going to make you a beggar, right? It's going to free you from begging and economic humiliation and societal, you know, oppression, lacking. In fact, the more you learn, the deeper you learn, the closer education should bring you closer to Allah. But secularists have played the game. Go and Google now if you have a phone. What is secular education? What is secularism? A clear separation between the state and Allah and religion. So you may find yourself too deep into world and world and world. And before you realize 60 years to come or 70, you are dead when you did not strengthen your relationship with Allah. Because all that you are chasing is called dunya, 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 right? That should not happen. In Islam, Islam is so balanced, young people. One of the best prayers, supplications that a Muslim makes, that the Prophet Sallallahu used to make is, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasan. Oh Allah, our Lord, grant us good, the best in this world, right? In Islam, Islam is not a prison. It is a signal mu'min in the sense that Allah has restricted you from doing certain things and doing certain things. It appears to be a paradise for a disbeliever because they don't care what to eat, what to consume, what to earn, and how to earn it. And somebody can just cause war in a country and it makes him rich. But Islam is regulating your life in one way or another that 
work so hard. There is no religion that discourages laziness like Islam. And there is no religion that promotes what? What is the opposite of laziness? American, Muslim Americans, what is the opposite of laziness? Huh? Productivity and hard working and action and being, you know, no religion that, 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 that promotes that, like Al Islam. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Al Mu'min Luqawi, Khayrun wa Ahabu ilallahi min al Mu'min Dhaif. That a strong Muslim, an active Muslim, a vigilant Muslim, is better and more beloved to Allah the Creator than a weak Muslim. And Prophet Muhammad sallallahu min da'awatihi, of his prayers, he used to say, Wa a'udhu bika min al kasal, right? Cowardice and laziness. Rasul used to say, Allah protect me from being coward and protect me from being lazy. There is no room for laziness in Islam. But that does not allow you to put all your effort in worldly material things to the extent that worldly material things becomes your main focus to the extent that you forget about the purpose of your life and your creator. Because without Allah, you would have not been here. Without the mercy of Allah, you cannot be in existence, right? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. We are from Allah and unto Allah we shall return. Don't ever forget that, Akhi, sister and brother. Don't, don't, don't deceive yourself that, you know, I'm still young. When I grow, I'm gonna, no, 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 no. What about if your death is, was decreed that it's gonna be tomorrow? What about if Allah decreed how old are you, brother? 21. And you, 19. And you, 15. What about if Allah, and I'm not saying that it's going to be. I don't know what is going to happen a minute from now. For me and you, I don't know. Only Allah knows, right? Like in suppose Allah only allowed you to live for 15 years or for 20 years. And you die knowing that you're going to stand in the court of Allah. Because that is the meaning of in Surah Al-Fatiha of Maliki Yawmiddin the master and the king of the day of judgment, the day of reward, the day of questions, the day of interrogation, the day of recompense. Each one of us will stand in front of Allah regardless of what age, at what age you die. Why don't we think like that? What guarantee do you have that you're gonna pass this age? What guarantee do we have that we're gonna pass this age in 2024? Yes, we plan ahead. But we have also to be sure that we have to agree and admit that we do not know whether we're going to make it until then, right? So you plan and you put your target to be there, but you have to be conscious of anything that may happen, include death. You being removed from the earth and life will continue. Point number five. Did you understand point number four? Materialism is really disturbing youths. Oh, materialism. Sometimes we think we need to invest a lot of thinking, right? And planning, and we have to be lacking that should not take you away from Allah. Dunya is the world is good, but where we are going to paradise is better. Khairun wa abqa is better, but also is permanent. The world is good, but temporary. That should be your understanding. So work hard here and hard, but work harder for your meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of the year. Point number five stress and management of time we are talking about challenges that youths are going through point number five stress depression anxiety ah, and man management of time did you understand that stress and management of time is another challenge in this community in this society, American society amongst Muslims and non-Muslims, but this is global now. Breaking it down. Many youths are suffering from what? Educational. Number two. Social. And number three, environmental issues. Yeah. There's a lot of pressure when you go to school and this and that, right? The school goes. A lot of pressure, right? Yeah. Then there are just a lot of homeworks and, you know, 
you want to meet the target before midnight and you know i see some some of you coming to the masjid with laptops eh? <laughs> i have to submit my homework by this and this a lot of pressure then there are social pressure as well and also there is environmental pressures these may lead to what they may affect you they may affect your you psychologically physically but also behavior behavior wise it will because it's a stress it's stressful it's a stressful situation it will definitely affect you mentally it will affect your behaviors it will affect your psychology and it will also affect you physically it is a challenge that youth are going through I'm just mentioning challenges. Solutions? We will discuss. Maybe you have solutions. Islam has solutions. I don't know how much and how far you have gone in studying your deen to know the solutions, right? Point number one. I'm going to number six and I will end at number ten. There are many because I want you to talk to me today. It was you talking to me, not me talking to you today. This is called thought provoking session. Number six. Substance abuse. Substance abuse. It is called smoking. You know smoking cigarette. I know you don't smoke. No one smokes in this machine. But I, I think you have read the names of cigarettes. Can you mention three cigarettes? I know you never smoke. Alhamdulillah. And whoever tried it was once. Hadakallah. May Allah die. Nobody smokes. But at least they advertise them on YouTube and what. What do you think? What is the name of uh, one cigarette? Just name it, I'm not going to mention, I'm not going to embarrass you. Eh? No. no, cigarette. Oh. Eh? Malbo. Mohammed, you know in Malbo, eh? <laughs> At least one youth knows the name of Malbo. I think you saw the packet on the road, yeah. Who knows the name of cigarette? Cigar. Who knows the name of it? Eh? There's the camel, right? Camel. Yeah. At, at least we have an idea. And then there's also, it is called vaping. You know vaping? Some people are hiding from cigarettes to that one. And then we have drugs. And then we have alcohol. This is a challenge in our community. It is a challenge in America. It is a, a global challenge. Substance abuse. Youths want to try something. They want to try, they say, I'm not smoking like weed, you know, I just want to, I want to try this cigarette. And you know, a friend tells you that, you know, it's not, you're not going to, you're not going to get high. Just try. Then you should, you take the camera, you know, camera. <laughs> then you say, but you know, he tells you, try it again. And you end up being Mr. <laughs> Have you seen the zombie? city in America. Zombie cities. How comes that Imam Shafi knows these things that some of you don't know? Zombie cities. I want you to Google tonight, even now, zombie city in your Philadelphia. Zombie. They call it zombie city. You can't imagine how human being who is living has turned to something else. People are like this. May Allah pray. May Allah, alhamdulillah, ladhi, may Allah save us from this. I mean, I'm not saying that they like being like that. There are circumstances that, you know, may be led to that. You don't just, you don't just blame people. But a human being is like, all his life. You can't sit, you can't stand straight. Can't turn. In the midst of the road, car is coming, it's by, do whatever you want to do. I'm already dead. <laughs> Muslims are part of that now. Boys, girls are part of this, both boys and girls. In our community and other communities, in the Muslim communities in America, and it's growing so bad. And don't think that you are safe if you don't make efforts to be safe. Right, my brothers? Point number seven. Gun, 
bad company and gangsterism. Go to Minnesota, there are groups. Go to Ohio, there are groups. Have you seen that? Have you seen that? I was just watching it the other day. Police is scared of them. Those are Muslims. Assalamu alaikum. And they ask them, hmm. In Denver here, there are bad groups among Muslims. They are. They are roaming around. They have a small gun here. They are walking around. They are just provoking. They can come to a, a, a restaurant. They can come to a restaurant to buy something. It can be after midnight. It can be in Ramadan. Some youth in our community can be after Ramadan, after midnight. Start away. The last 10 days, I don't say that Muslim boys are bad. I'm just telling you that that one or two or three out of thousands, we have to agree that that disease is already in, right? It, even if it comes through only one person. Many youths, alhamdulillah, have been safe, but don't be so safe. I'm talking about challenges today. A group of youths in Ramadan are working in a restaurant, and I think they buy some, uh, how do you call it, Pepsi and this and that. And they show some attitude to the employees, not even the employer. These employees are, they are struggling. They sacrifice their night to be there to get some few dollars to pay their rent. And all of a sudden, these Muslim youth have started breaking things in, the, in this place. Last Ramadan. Bad company. I don't know what they smoked. I don't know what they smoked, man. I don't know if they vet or they smoked, or they drugged themselves, or they alcohol. <laughs> I don't know what they use, but I'm talking about, I'm talking about gang, gangsterism and bad company, right? It's a challenge. A Muslim wanna hang out with bad boys. You know that they're thieving. You know that they're stealing cars. You know that they're having guns. You know that all their stories is, you know, how can we shoot? Can I do this and that and that? And you know that most of music that is being sung now, you know, is how you can shoot and promoting violence. And yeah, I don't care. Yeah. My man, my homie, I can hang in your mouth. And then, yeah. Eight bullets. And then, yo, yo, yo. And you say, yo, 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 right? Yo, yo, yo. Muslim, yo, yo, yo. Man. What is the point number six and seven? Substance abuse and bad company. Substance? Abuse. Abuse, right? And then? Bad company. Bad Okay. Number eight. Gender issues. Gender. There's a challenge in the Muslim community now. Am I a boy or a girl? Am I a girl or a boy? The corruption of the highest level, not knowing who you are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala is al dhakaru kal untha. Wala is al dhakaru kal untha. That a male is a male and a female is a female, period. One time, um, somebody called me that he, it, she, it, he, she, it, what, they, them, one attack shahada. Imam Shafi, somebody has given me your, your number, I want to text her harder. It's they, right? It she, it they. But the voice was like mine. <laughs> this one, eh? So I say, so what's your name? Mention uh, a middle name. Not James, not, not Ashley, not Jane. Not James, not Jane. Okay, somebody's calling me, hi, but I see there's a hi, hi in between, right? So then I'm worried, because if it's a woman, <laughs> you can easily identify this is a lady talking to you, right? And if it's a man, it's like Imam Shafi, Salaamu Alaikum, right? But now there is, hi, 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 hey, I say, what's going on here? No. 
So I, I gave, I gave it because he, it, she, he, them are calling Imam, right? It, he, them, she, it, they, them is calling Imam. So then I say, how can I serve you? He say, yeah, somebody, but you know, you can't help it. Somebody, a girl is straight, a boy is straight. Somebody gave me your number. Okay, then I say, okay. Uh, so how can I he say, I wanted to be a Muslim. But I also wanted to come and pray on Juma in the masjid. I said, there's no problem. Islam is a religion of everybody, right? Anybody who want to be a Muslim, we welcome them to Islam. I say, so I'm sorry to ask for this question. What else do you want to tell me about yourself? Then I know if you are a lady, I can hand you over to ladies, right? To take care of you if you're a man. He say, no, I am, I am. It, it, she, then he mentioned that. So I say that you can take your shahada, no problem. This is between you and Allah, right? I can help you, I can facilitate. But if you want to come like to the mosque on Friday, we only have two places, right? They turn female and the male. One day when we have a middle path, I'm going to call you. I was smart, right? Alhamdulillah, right? We don't stop anybody from coming to Islam because number one, Islam, as soon as you take your shahada, all your previous sins are forgiven, right? And number two, you have opened a new page with Allah, right? Yes or no? You have opened a new page with your creator. And it is your relationship with Allah. And it, it, it doesn't matter what you did in the past, right? You open a new page, but Islam makes it clear that a male is a man and a female is what? And Islam is also based on family life, whereby man marries women. A woman doesn't marry a woman in Islam. A man doesn't marry a man in Islam because you want to make a family. We have handsome men in the community. We have beautiful sisters in the community. We promote marriage to procreate and have a family and have children, right? You want to be a responsible man? That is Islam. Beautiful, right? The structure is there, right, brothers? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioned in the beginning of creating human being, Allah in Surah to Nisa, chapter 4, verse 1, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nas, O mankind, uh, Ya ayyuhal nas, ittaku rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa khalaqa minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma yalan kathira. Quran chapter 4, verse 1. وَبَثَّ مِنْهُمَا رِجَالًا كَثِيرًا وَنِسَاءً وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَشَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا Allah is mentioning how he created Adam and created Eve, male and female, and then through male and female they are getting married and Allah is helping them to have babies. A man will never have a baby alone, a woman cannot have alone, we have to be a family, Islam is a family, so, so there is identity what? Gender gender issue in our community. Boys, men remain to be boys, men. And you know what Allah wants you to do? Yani what Allah, how Allah is guiding you from a baby and then boys to men. Boys to? Amen. And sisters maintain being sisters. There is big crisis in, 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 in global world today where women are hunting other women, even in marriages. You get married to a sister, but she is also it. And they and he. With you, she is she. When she goes to, can you imagine? When she goes at work or what, she is he, it, they. So <laughs> there is gender crisis. I'm coming with last points. The last points is another challenge that Muslims are going through, especially Muslim youth, is Islamophobia and how Muslims are being persecuted and targeted all over the world. This has really depressed some Muslims and it has weakened some Muslims. Because you just think about, you know, it, it will affect you. We are brothers. You see what is happening in UK now? A non-Muslim, a, non, a Christian young man who is even sick, he has some mental issues. Originally from Rwanda, invaded a place and stabbed, did an evil thing, right? That is very evil. You don't stab people, you don't try to kill people like that. Right, brothers? But because of some haters and Islamophobic, they started spreading news that it was a Muslim terrorist. 
and the UK all of a sudden has a rapture. And now they, they, they burned some mosques. You know that in this two, three, four days, anybody who follows news, if, as we are talking now, as we are talking now, things are happening in UK. You can go through news. Imam Shafi watch some beneficial news. They are burning masajid. Germany has also started a few, few, few weeks ago. They shut down 50 mosques. Of course, they say that Shia and what, but you know, they start from there and then you will see it. And they say that now they say that not only Muslims, Muslims and immigrants should go back to their country. Man, where are we going to? If you take, kick me out of uh, Denver, I'm going to Texas. I'm going to a country called Texas. You kick me out of Texas, I'm going to a country called Wyoming. <laughs> Easy. Because the earth is created by Allah. It's not anybody who allows you to be in a country or not. No. Allah wanted me here. You can go to Saudi Arabia and leave. You can go where and leave. You can go wherever you are. You, 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 you can go. Yeah. So this thing of hate, you know, and, 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 you know, it's not good. Stereotyping and labeling and what is not good. And they have leaders who are inciting people to do that. You understand that? So yes, if you see the condition of Muslims in the world, some people are living in fear. Should I go to the masjid? Should I put on my hijab? Right. By last year, they say that almost 55% of youths, of, of Muslims have gone through some abuse, whether verbal, you know, or just bullying. Somebody even driving a car will, will, will show you a type of a finger, not the shahada one. Somebody will just insult you. Sisters are living in fear because if I walk alone, somebody may pull down my hijab and we see that happening, right? So this has also depressed some youths, especially, you know, and, and you have seen people changing their identities, changing their names and all that. Right, my brothers? And lastly, there is an issue, we mentioned drugs, we mentioned gun, we mentioned this and this. I want to say that youths also, there is a challenge of balancing, no, no, there, there's a challenge of, of, uh, of uh, committing to making positive changes in their lives and assuming leadership positions. It's a big thing. Somebody's still feeling that I'm a baby. Somebody's still feeling that I'm a baby. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. And mom is going to take care of me. And you, you grow age 10, still a baby. 15, lollipop baby. Lollipop. Mm -hmm. Like this. Right? All that age 20, you're still a baby. You haven't realized that you're a grown up. You need to make some changes in your life. You are now responsible in the sight of Allah. How can I make some changes? Yes, I made some mistakes at age 11, 12, 13, right? I'm 15 now. I'm 20 now. I'm a man. I'm a grown-up. I'm responsible to Allah. What is this that I can do? How can I change my life? How can I avoid wrong things, wrong places, wrong company? How can I connect, you know, to good places, good company, good people, right? Who can benefit me? And how can I be a leader? We have not done that. So these are a few challenges that we have, and uh, I want to stop there. Kamal, come and organize, they, they continue with this. Come, come closer now. Come, come and, and uh, yeah. Bring, bring this chair forward. Shakti, uh, for giving us these amazing points about challenges pertaining to you. Um, inshallah, we said that we're going to ask questions. Um, we want this to be a thought-provoking discussion. I know we went a little bit over time. Um, inshallah, we can 
delay the Isha Khanla by around 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah. yeah, I'll be good. So bear with us, uh, bear with us, inshallah. Um, if anybody wants to ask questions for our Imam to answer, go ahead. And also, before we ask questions, um, I actually want to introduce uh, a very beloved brother. Um, the other day, when we were on the Dawa table outside in downtown, uh, we had the pleasure of meeting our brother Treshan. Uh, we had a very good discussion with him, and mashallah, he embraced the religion of Islam. So I want to introduce him to the rest of the community, and for everybody to embrace him and to welcome him, and to know that this is your new brother in Islam, and to make him feel at home over here. He's our brother, man, a very amazing brother, intelligent like all of you. He came and, you know, we spent some time with him, mashallah, outside, downtown. Of course, he's coming from another state, and uh, he's been uh, reading, he's been researching about his life, and he's Muslim. And he said that, you know, this is the truth, and I should take my shahad. It's all day in downtown. And that is why we are encouraging youth to come. Come out with us, man. There's a lot of good outside. Allah. A lot of good. You're going to see many things. You're going to socialize in a positive, halal way. You're going to, you know, make friendships. You're going to know neighbors. Right? Inshallah. Now. Tell me. Don't look for Don't look for Have some respect. Don't look for Inshallah, the floor is open up for questions. Sisters, don't be shy. Brothers, don't be shy. Um, it's good to take advantage of opportunities like this with uh, local Iman, some of their knowledge uh, for us to reach the correct solutions and the best solutions, Inshallah. 10, 11 points presented. If you have any question, please. Bismillah. Subhanallah, Muhammad is right. I forgot this point. It is called two plugged in electronics. I had that point. Too much plugged into electronics. Technology is a mercy of Allah. It's a mercy, it's a favor of Allah upon us, right? Technology in general. But Islam is against misusing something or being extravagant about something, even a good thing, or using it in a haram way. Haram means prohibited and forbidden. And, and we know the effects, negative effects of, uh, of uh, social media and all this. It has a lot of good. The whole world has been brought right in your hand here. But we know the side effects like uh, backbiting in it, we know gambling in it, right? Watching haram, nudity, ikhtilat. People think that ikhtilat, free mixing with uh, with uh, non-mahram genders is just, you know, physical. It can be there. Right? There are just many evil things, right? It, it attracts you to even, it can uh, program you. You become insensitive of violence, right? You just, you just watch these things until you get used to it. And that is why some people watch these horror movies and tell young people, they try to shoot others. Right? It exposes you to many, many dirty things, nudity and what, and then there are those X, 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 you know the X, 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 pornography. A young person is watching these things, and you know. So, so yeah. Or just wasting your time for six hours. You don't even know what you're doing. You're browsing, you start with, let me talk to this friend. Maybe you talk to a friend and another friend and third friend, then you start just wasting time. It happens to me and you. It is so addictive to parents. It's so addictive to youths. Yani one house, one house, everybody has from iPad to nose pad to ear pad. And then you have the phone. Then we have screen on all the walls in the bedrooms. 
How many gadgets do you have? So now, people don't even talk in one house. Let us think positive about technology. Dada is busy on his own. I'm also tried with this. I am also going through this in my house. I have a phone, and mashallah, each one of us has the best phone, right? Something for 10, 15 men, right? Uh, so you are here, and your dad is here, you don't talk. Dad and mom are here, they don't talk. Children, all children, either with iPad, with phones, three, four hours, nobody's talking in the house. Sometimes you are in the same house and dad is texting, or mom is texting, or a brother is texting, Salaamu Alaikum, can you get me a drink from the fridge? It is like the house is dead. What do you think? So I call it two. Uh -huh. What? So, so one of the challenges that you know, youth are going through is, you know, through this, again, they, some of them want to watch bad things, some of them want to try certain things through that, and we know the addiction of, uh, of, uh, of uh, kids are here. But watching, you know, haram things and, you know, you, we know the addiction. We know that it's so bad. Medically, it's not good. Scientifically, it's not good. Mentally, it's not good. It's not good. It's haram. It's haram. It's not good. Yeah. So what is the solution, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala taqarabu zina. It is a, it is fornication. Watching those things is fornication, especially, you know, it's a, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not come closer to it. Closer in Islam means control your eyes from looking. Right? We are created to desire, right? Women are desiring, men are desiring. Like and suppress your desire. Okay, fight it. When we talk about jihad is that. Fight your, your, your heart from desiring that. Fight it. Don't listen to things that are attracting you to that. Don't talk about things that are attracting you to that. Don't touch, don't go there. And then keep away from it completely. That is the only solution. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala taqrabuzina. Another thing, brothers, getting married is not difficult in Islam. There is marriage and then there is celebration called walima or hafla, or zafaf, or whatever they call it. I'm really encouraging young people to get married. You graduated, or you did not graduate, but at least you have some business. Okay? I'm not talking about 11 years old to get married, not you, okay? <laughs> but we have brothers who have graduated. Alhamdulillah, they have their job, and, 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 and at least you have one bedroom or two bedroom, one bedroom house or a studio. So why don't you want to get married? Because culturally and traditionally, marriage has been exaggerated. You need to have 50,000, and then you need to have this and this, and buy gold, and buy that. And our families are also problematic when it comes to marriage. Because mother or father says that, no, we have to organize for your marriage. Your marriage has to beat our cousin who got married some, some five years ago. We have to invite many people. I worked, mothers are saying, I worked so hard to raise you. Many people have to attend this and that. Wallahi, we make nikah here, and some people say that I just need Quran as a, as a, as a man. Some people are saying that I just need a thousand, as, as, as you know, as a dowry. Marriage in Islam is the best solution. Unfortunately, we have not been so supportive for youth to get married. We put a lot of obstacles. Some parents have some good reasons because they know you. Maybe they think that you have not gotten there. Lacking, and unfortunately, youths are going through a lot. Don't be surprised that in some communities, if you see 10 youths, maybe five have, have tested women, or some girls have known men. It can be in the community, through high school and this and that. Is that okay? Or nika marriage. So solution is there, parents are not helpful, but also youths are not helpful, and then there is the youth should avoid free mixing, and talking to strangers, and calling some people, my babe, my this, how do you call a girl who is not even your, your, your relative, my babe? Babe, how? Girls, stop. Stop. When you start chatting to men like this and just chatting and another man, another man, 
If you get a 10th person who is serious, he's not going to respect you. I'm telling you that. Boys, do not think that, oh, I'm safe, you know. I'm going to mess up. Then I'm going to get this young girl. She will not respect you. Because you are lying to her. So why can't you make a decision and get married? Choose a good girl who fear Allah, a beautiful one. She's your wife. Islam promotes, you know, getting married. So two solutions, right? Avoid anything that leads to adultery or fornication. And number two, do what is right. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said in the hadith, Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, all young people, all is, Rasul called you all respected. The Prophet Muhammad called you all respected young people, all respected youths. Look at how he respected it. All respected teenagers. Whoever is capable of getting married, let him get married. For if you get married, it's going to help you to guard your eyes from looking at everybody. Because everybody cannot be your wife, right? But also it's going to help you to guard your, your private part. If you can't fast, try to fast and be closer to Allah and make sure that Allah make it easy for you. Right, brothers? So that those are some solutions that we can uh, we can, and Allah knows best. Inshallah. Another question. I mentioned eleven points now. Yeah. Sometimes uh, we might find ourselves with a high level of iman when we're in the masjid or Islamic center places, but sometimes when we're in like school or in the workforce and around maybe like a lot of non-Muslims, we kind of forget ourselves our true identity so how do we um, avoid being one person on one side and a different person on the other side and being true to ourselves so there are people who are very in other language they call them spiritual they have iman like in the mosque okay at home but as soon as they go to another environment they are different how do you do that? Number one, realize that, recognize and realize that you are a Muslim. What is the meaning of Islam? A person who submits to Allah by practicing Islam. Keep that in mind. You submit to Allah through what? Through his oneness. At Tawheed, and a, a, a Muslim is a person who obeys Allah. Keep that in mind that I'm a Muslim in the mosque, as I am a Muslim at work. I'm a Muslim when traveling. I'm a Muslim amongst Muslims, and I'm a Muslim amongst non-Muslims. Number two, brothers. Practice your Islam. Wherever you are, just remember that there are, there are things that I can do when I'm inside the mosque. But as soon as you leave the masjid, is worship. Does worship end with being in the mosque? No. What should you do outside there? Make a God. No? Make remembrance of Allah, make dua, ayat of Quran, remember the favors of Allah upon you. Do good inside the masjid, outside the masjid. And that follows hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Prophet Muhammad said, Ittaqillaha haythu makunt, fear Allah wherever you are. Yes? Fear Allah in the mosque, on the plane. Because Allah is seeing you. Can you hide from Allah? Inna Allah la yakhfa alayhi shay'un fi la fi sama. Nothing hides from Allah be it in, 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 in the heavens or earth. Know that Allah is seeing you. Temporarily, forget about human beings. Assume that you are the only person on earth and Allah is watching you. How are you going to be here? That is called Al-Ihsan, right? And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka. Tara. Ihsan means to perfection. We are not perfect. But perfection means to worship Allah as if you see him. Even though we don't see him in dunya, in this world, you must always know that Allah is seeing you. That alone is an advice, Ya Kamal. Allah is seeing me, and then Allah sent angels to record my deeds, good and bad. And have Qiyamah in your mind, I'm going to die, and everything that was recorded down, I will be questioned. Did you understand this, my brother? Islam does not hold you back from progressing dunya -wise. If you can afford the best car, what does Islam say? Can you buy it or not? You can have the best car. The car that has not been produced today. Islam does not stop you from dressing well. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Inna Allah jamilun wa yuhibbul jamal. Allah is perfect and he loves beauty. Islam does not stop you from, you know, having the best shoes, man. Islam is beauty. 
Islam, does, Islam is the only religion that talks about eating organic, healthy, and the best food if you can afford. Don't steal to, to, to afford it. But if you can afford it, there's no problem. Islam talks about not just marrying a woman. Allah says, Islam promotes marrying a beautiful woman. Islam promotes marrying a handsome man, right? That is Islam. But please, please, please. When you are a Muslim, knowing that Allah has created everything for your benefit, maintain your Islam when you are amongst Muslims and even when you are amongst non-Muslims. Fear Allah, know that Allah is seeing you, know that angels are recording your deeds. Your book is going to be presented to you on the day of judgment, sooner or later, and this will determine your endless, yani, beautiful life in Jannah or Jahannam. Be responsible, whatever you are. Now, uh, I think a, uh, a lot of the challenges, or one of the challenges Muslims face, is how they start off their day. Um, so, could you give us a routine of maybe the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what he did, what was his action, the things, maybe some things he said to start off his day? How does a Muslim start his day? Simple. The Muslims wake up. If you can wake up for tahajjud, then the the night prayer. Right? Perform tajud in the last what? Third part of night. If it passes, then at least wake up for fajr. Perform salatul fajr, two rakah before fajr and, and then two rakah of fajr and then rakate in fajr and then fajr. And then a Muslim stays at where he performed this prayer for some minutes, right? To bring some adkar, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no problem of, you know, making dua. But as you wake up, before you perform Salatul Fajr, there's a dua. Which dua is that? When you wake up as a Muslim. As soon as you wake up, a Muslim is praising Allah and thanking Allah. Alhamdulillah, illadhi. Ahyana ba'dama amatana wa ilayhi nushur. A Muslim, as soon as you open your eyes, you say, Alhamdulillah, illadhi. Praise be to Allah, who? Ahyana, who gave us life. Ba'dama amatana. After he took our life, he suspended our life when we slept. You are like dead men. And now Allah is giving you another chance, another life. What is the meaning of ilayhi nushur? You have thanked Allah for giving you life. After he took your life last night, then you, you connect your day with qiyamah. You say, wa ilayhi nushur. And unto Allah is our gathering on the day of judgment. So all your life is geared and directed towards meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, in between here, if it is on Monday or Thursday, Prophet Muhammad fasted, right? And then if not, then we have, you know, Salat al-Duha, Turaka, four, eight or more, you can perform, right? And in Mecca al remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, la ilaha illallah wa ahdahu la sharika la, right? There are, there are, listen, there are self six amal that a Muslim should always do in a day. One, remember your five prayers, perform them. Five daily prayers, perform them. Number two, Qira'atul Qur'an, recite Qur'an. You wanna make your day? You want Allah to help you to make your day? Perform your five prayers and other optional prayers, sunnah. Number two, recite Al-Qur'an, even if it is one surah, even if it is one page. Right, my brothers? Number three is make adkar, remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, my brothers? Number four, make dua, supplication. Supplication, make dua. Spend some time, Muslims hardly make dua. We have that, it is called dua to go. You know dua to go? You know dua to go? You know to go like you are buying food at uh, McDonald's from the window. They ask you, do you eat here or to go? There's also dua to go. After salah, that is called dua to go. That one. Number five, make istighfar. Ask Allah for forgiveness as much as you can. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. For new brothers in Islam, say it even in English. Oh Allah, forgive me. Oh Allah, astaghfirullah. Another thing, make isti'ada. Make Isti'ada, make isti'ada, ask Allah for protection. And number seven, you need to give some sadaqah. And lastly, 
participate in serving the ummah, serving others, being a person who is of benefit for others. As the Prophet said, khairun nasi, khairun nas nas. That, that the best of people is the one who is of benefit for others. Visit the sick, okay? Feed the poor, feed the hungry. Do this on daily basis, even if you just choose one good thing, Allahu Akbar, your day is going to be good. Avoid haram and do what is halal. Avoid what Allah has forbidden, okay? And do the correct thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Zahra, you want to ask a question? Bismillah. Stress, you know, stress is divided into two. There are stress that needs specialists, that needs medical attention. Yeah. Islam encourages that, you know, Rasul said, Tadawu, how Tadawu, seek medical attention. Of course, when you wake up and you are sick, you make dua and you ask Allah to cure you, and then follow the means, go to doctors, go to the hospital, go to specialists, psychologists, and this and this. There's no problem with that. Islam values knowledge. But then, Sometimes go, you, you may know the source of your stress. Sometimes. Maybe something triggered it. And something, sometimes you may not know. So if you know the source, then deal with the source. Maybe you are somebody's wife and husband is give you some small, small headache, right? <laughs> and maybe you are somebody's husband and wife is too much in the house, right? Maybe it's children who are giving you headache, right? Maybe it is, you know, working conditions. There is that pressure. So stress and all these anxieties and what there is a part of it that you may go back to you may go back to the source and if you know alhamdulillah you can deal with it as you are making dua and also seeking yani, medical or professional attention but the best is allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alladhina amanu and those who believe watatma'innu qulubuhum and their hearts are peaceful and contented with the remembrance of Allah. Allah says that no, that by remembering Allah, you will have peace of mind and content, contentment. Many anxieties can also come from jinn and shayateen. So read Quran and recite Ruqya and connect with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of it, inshallah. Somebody is asking, he said, they understand that there's consequences for sin, but if they ask for forgiveness for sin, will they still face the repercussions of, of those sins? And also, um, what are the attributes of Allah, the Ghafur and al Rahman? So what is the attribute of Allah, al Ghafur, al Rahman, right? al Ghafur, Abdul Ghafur, al Ghafur, so we call Abdul Ghafur. al Ghafur means the all forgiving. al Rahman, al Rahim, the most merciful. Not just the massive, but the most. The concept of forgiveness is very big in Islam. If you commit a sin, and all of us are sinful in one way or another, either sins that we commit knowingly, or sins that mistakes we make unknowingly, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that in Quran, Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina aw akhbana. Oh Allah, do not make us responsible, do not punish us. If we make if we commit a sin, if we make a mis if we commit a sin or make a mistake, right? So sometimes we commit, we make mistakes forgetfully or you know deliberately, or sometimes we know. But the, the, the idea is that whenever you commit a sin, ask Allah for forgiveness, He will forgive you. Something that I want to say before, yeah, just quickly, there are two types of committing sins and crimes, and you treat them differently. One. A sin that you committed between you and Allah. All of us are committing sin. In one way, your mouth sometimes, but biting somebody, talking bad about, you know, you know, behind somebody. There are just many sins that we commit. So if you committed a sin by violating the commandment of Allah, then ask Allah for forgiveness. And he will forgive you. No sheikh or imam or religious leaders has authority to tell you that Allah is not going to forgive you. He has not that. I have not that authority. So this is one type of sins, right? It happened, you committed zina, you did this, you smoked, you did this, you, you were drunk up yesterday. Yet in Islam, you don't even need to, to come and confess your sins to me. Who am I? I'm your brother. I'm just your leader. 
Allah has put me in this position. But it is your relationship with Allah. So ask him for forgiveness in your bedroom. Ask him for forgiveness when you are driving. Ask, just say, oh Allah, forgive me. He promised that he will forgive you. Inna Allah Allah will forgive all sins. The second type of sin is you wrong somebody. You stole somebody's money. Somebody lent you money and you never returned his money. You beat somebody. You oppress somebody. It's a, it's a sin, right? So what do you do? You have to do two things. You have to return somebody's right. Or if you backbited him, go to him and tell him, brother, <laughs> very difficult, I backbited you. I wronged you in this way, forgive me. Now, whether he forgives you or not, you have washed your hand, then ask Allah for forgiveness. Or ask Allah for forgiveness, but then you have to return that right. Then this is the completeness of what. So the question was, uh, if I commit that sin and I ask Allah for forgiveness, okay? What about the effect of that sin? No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-forgiving, all-merciful. He will forgive and it will be arrest, unlike human beings. In the system here, if government arrests you with police, how do you call it? Reckless or whatever, careless driving, and they booked you in, your name is still going to remain there. The judge may pardon you, but your name is still there. Another 10 years. If it happens, they're going to go back to that and say, you see, you committed it 10 years. With Allah, it's not like that. Allah will arrest it. It will forgive him, and he gives you another chance. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he forgives all sins, especially for those who repent. And lastly, there is another type of sin that is committed without even you saying, Astaghfirullah. Allah says, Inna al-hasanat yudhibna sayyat. If you committed some sins, they piled up. Just by doing any good righteous deeds, Allah is forgiving all those sins. So every good thing you do also leads to your sins being erased and forgiven, especially minor sins. So may Allah forgive all our sins. Shall we? Now, yes. Regards to point three, how can a person respectfully navigate a healthy relationship with their parents, especially with the miscommunication they might uh, come across when talking to foreign parents with their own beliefs or perspectives? Young people, no one, he says that in regards to point, point number three, right? At least you are listening to me. Yeah, yeah. For the, no, you, at least you are, you are listening. At least you are listening to me today, man. Alhamdulillah. Did you have lunch? So he says that with regards to relationship between parents and their sons or children, how do a young, children, right? What should they do? What is the healthiest way of mending and strengthening their bonds and relationship with their parents? Number one. As you worship, you have to know that respecting your parents and being obedient to your parents and being dutiful to your parents, obedience, respectfulness, and, and dutifulness to your parents is an act of worship. If you don't do that, you're committing a major sin. Brothers who reverted to Islam, whether your parents are Muslims or not, they have rights over you. You have to take care of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already closed that. رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Surah to Bani Israel. And your Lord has decreed that you should not worship any other thing. You, you can, yani you should, none has the right to be worshipped except Allah. And then he says that as you worship Allah also, you have to be kind and dutiful to your parents. Keep that in mind. Unless your parents command you to do haram, buy me alcohol. Then you tell them, I, I cannot do this. I can help buy you something healthier. You understand that? Go and buy me some uh, drugs and what you tell them, I can't do that. Then you have right to disobey them in that matter. But all, yani, all good things, you have to be dutiful, help them and support them. Another thing, you have to know that no one on earth loves you like your parents. Nobody. And what is the proof? We are living in a country where people are aborting, abortion, right? People are aborting kids. 
Some people are giving back to kids and then they put them in carrying bags and they dump them in supermarket or somewhere, right? Why your mother didn't do that if she didn't love you? Your father hates you? Maybe when you grow, he's a little bit tough and rough and, you know, he talks. Maybe he's a little bit drunk and who knows? Or he's just like that, his behaviors, you know? You, you can't connect. Lucky, I'm telling you, no one loves you like your father. You have to know that when your father was marrying your dad, from that time, he forgot about his own shirt. You are his shirt. You are his food. You replace everything from that man. He just thought of your mother, how am I going to take care of my family? How am I going to feed my family? That family, before you were born, man, you were part of his what? You are here. Your father's been having you here before you were born. Mothers are carrying us here. For nine months, I joke with my wife. But our fathers, fathers, parents are carrying us here throughout their life. 